we'd like to welcome uh, probably Hemet that uh, I have to met some uh, a few months, months ago and had him to come down and give this presentation. I heard him, uh, I only heard him talking about it and uh, understood, uh, understood that he gave presentations on, on the Dogon of Mali. So he offered to his service to come down and give a presentation uh, at Africa House this evening. Uh, we meet here every every uh, every Saturday with different programs, and as we <coughs> pass out, uh, you see what we have on, on the uh, different days, different Saturdays. And uh, I just want to say that we welcome you and hope that you would enjoy what you hear. I don't have too much to say, brother, because it's kind of rough for me to do this. But nevertheless, uh, <coughs> I'd like to welcome you. And I'll introduce to you now Mr. Bobby Hammond. That's what we're here. All right. Uh, this is Brother Levine. I met him about what? Back in September or August? Yeah. And uh, I just heard me talking. I run in my mouth as usual. I'm loud, you know. We, we always look at that as being negative. Oh, he's loud, but it's coming in some use. And uh, I met the brother, and he said, well, you ought to come down to the Africa house. And I didn't know where it was. And this is my first time being here. And all, uh, you know, but that let us know that brothers and sisters are working in our midst while we are doing other things. Uh, like I said before, um, I like to uh, keep my lectures in a sense that we're talking in the living room. And as we see, we got an appropriate setting this time. Because um, I don't care if I'm in uh, Madison Square Garden, I'm talking to brothers and sisters. And that's the whole thing. We must come humble enough so you can receive the information with comfort. Because it's a lot of things. We're 180 degrees from the truth. And as long as we live, we should learn something. That's a great uh, tool in the mystery school, is every day you live, you should learn something. And the day you don't learn something is the day you are dead. And Basically, we got a lot of people walking around dead. You see. So, um, a lot of the material I'm dealing with tonight, uh, I'm going to touch on the Dogon of Mali, but uh, too often we do a lot of cultural things and we don't link it to today. And so this stuff is happening in our lives right now. And I know a lot of people have a lot of questions that's going on in the communities. We see black people just going crazy. But we see them in the underclass going crazy. We see them in the middle class going crazy. We just see all this chaos. And we don't know a way out. So in each lecture from now on to the year 2000, we need to have some type of answer and build a bridge, and build a new pyramid. So we do more answers that will lead us closer and closer. Like I say, I don't have the firm foothold on what we need to do. Nobody does. But that's a, one part of our struggle and liberation. It's going to take more than just one person, but each person has put that puzzle together. I guess the best place to start, other than any place, is at the beginning. And no better place to start at the beginning than Africa, or as we say, Kemet, Egypt. For you that don't know the word Kemet, meaning black land, or even black people. And the best place to start is at the beginning. And I always make it a promise to wish myself good luck by starting the lecture off in none other than the black woman. Because whether we know it or not, if you really look at it, that's where we fell from grace. That's why we catching the punishment. We catching this hell or we catching now. For somehow, we fell from the black woman or we failed each other. But it's a lot of stuff that we don't know today that's revolving around the black woman. The black man has his role too. But some time in a patriarchal society, he seems to stand out a little more. So we're going to start right here with the temple of Dendera. This is the temple of the goddess Hathor in Kemet, or Egypt, called the temple of Dendera. Now this temple was built in the Ptolemy period, which is late Kemet, or late Egypt. But the point is, there's something that's in this temple that they put in the temple that is over 90,000 years old. You see, when they were building this temple, they tore down an older temple that they were building. And in the older temple, they had a piece of blueprint that was in the crack. 
of the older temple. And in this blueprint, they constructed the ceiling, which is the planar sphere or the zodiac. I'm show you. I'm going to get through this. This zodiac is very important. Let me turn it around this way. Because I want to show you. Let's turn it this way. That'll do it. I want to show you certain things. In this zodiac represents all of the gods, all of the heavens, all of the stars. The religions that you practice today is in here just in another language. <coughs> fighting over the wrong things. Different philosophical differences, but it's all the same as in another language. But it is in here. One thing that is missing from today's modern uh, religions is the cosmos. We know nothing about the planets. And there's an old treatise coming from Hermes Thrice Magistus, or you would say the god Tahuti, that says that there will be a time when the people won't know about the heavens because they won't know about the stars. But anyway, in the middle of this zodiac, right in the middle, and I'm going to show you a picture of this in a few minutes, in the middle, we have one particular character giving birth to all of these other stars, which is all of the other gods. That particular character is who I want to dwell on. And that particular character looks like this. This is a hippopotamus god by the name of Tot Earth or Athen, and she is called the first great mother. So we must understand that this concept of God, even though we're talking about a cosmological and a spiritual force, this concept of God, we cannot wipe out the feminine principle. The feminine principle is always there to save us. She's the first great mother, top earth, of Athens. And she's gave, she gave birth to all of the gods in Kemet. I wanted to dwell on that. And this temple in Kemet was built to honor her. It is also built to honor the star Sirius, which I'm going to touch on tonight, because this is key point, the star Sirius. Okay. Get through these slides right quick so we can go into some serious stuff here. This is the inside of that temple. And it's one thing you find out about Kemet. Every single thing in Kemet or Egypt had God all over it even on all of the pillars. Each one of these pillars, the walls, everything had God all over it. God was there all the time. There was no place or nothing. Even if they had, just say if they had some scissors, it would have the gods on it. If you go and you see different artifacts from Kemet, you will see some type of the gods, or you will see the pharaohs, which are, in fact, the living person of God. The pharaoh is called the divine kingship. What he's supposed to do is to take on the role of God and by taking on that role of God, he could never deceive the people because he's acting as God on an earthly planet. He's another picture of the great mother. You can get this book, Charles Finch's Echoes of the Dark Land. You can get it at the Shrine of the Black Madonna. Have a whole section on that. You can go into this and you go into this in great detail. Uh, another work is Gerald Massey's Light of the World, now um, in hardback for the people who was at the uh, Revolution 101. They had them on the spiral bound. Now you can get them on hardback. They're about $90 for the whole set, but then again, uh, you spend money on all kinds of foolishness, you know. So, this is the Temple of Karnak, or the Temple of Wari or uh, Pedai Su. It's the oldest university in the world, along with Dendera. This, is, this temple took 200 years to build. That is, for every pharaoh that came added its own piece. Can you see? Added its own piece into this, onto this temple. This temple is a mile and a half long, half a mile wide. Remember those figures? Mile and a half long, half a mile wide. Because when we go into the lecture, we'll, we'll deal with this, or uh, we'll deal with the half a mile by half a mile. By the way, this is the temple of Amen, Amen Ra, or the temple of Ra, or the, the god Ra. And very important for what we need to deal with. Okay, wait a minute. 
This is another, let me start with this. This is another layout. This is another layout of how long it would look. They say it would reach from here to the Fulton County Stadium. That is the largest place of worship on the earth. It's, it's in shambles now if you go there, but you can still see this massive structure. Right. This is another layout of it. Show you a main layout. This is how this thing would look. All of this would be the entire temple, the wall. There's several temples meeting with each other. One temple that's important that you must look is a smaller temple. You can't see it, but it's the temple of Aphet or Tothur, that world's great mother that I showed you at first. Now, when you go into your churches, you see what you would have the pool pulpit or uh, the Holy of Holies or the Sanctum Sanctorium. The Sanctum Sanctorium or the Holy of Holies is nothing but a womb. The priesthood in Kemet, I know now that the transformation of man, when he went into the priesthood, was he was supposed to come in on the lower level and leave on the higher level. And what man was supposed to do was to become more like woman. Not in the perverted sense, but more like woman. He had to elevate his spiritual hair, and that was coming more like woman. The Sanctum Sanctorium, only the high priest would come to the Sanctum Sanctorium after so many years of initiation, and this would be where they would get, it was, it's, it's almost like going back into the womb, going back into the mother. And like I said before, you either go back this way, or you'll spend a lifetime trying to go back this way, you see. Anyway, this is very important. There's a book you can get on a, uh, a book by the name of The Golden Ass of Apuleius. Apuleius or Apuleius, The Golden Ass, translated by Robert Graves. It's a classic work that you thought it was a piece of Greek classic work like the Iliad or the Odyssey of Homer, but it is an actual initiate. It was on the verge of homosexuality, uh, perversion, maniac, rapist, murderer, anything that you could think of that would come out of the European world. He traveled to Kemet and was able to be initiated in the mysteries of Isis. <coughs> and it saved him and transformed him into uh, the human beings that we are naturally are, you see, by nature. Now, I just wanted to hit upon that. Now I want to go into the Dogon. Dogon is in the French Sudanese Mali, Mali in Africa, he didn't know, and, and this, in the 1930s, in 1931, two, uh, one French anthropologist by the name of um, Marcel Rio went to Mali, and he went and he visited these people. At the time, he saw these people because, uh, Part of Mali is Islamic, and at the time these people didn't fit the pattern of the regular people in Mali. These people had an obscure, if you would say, uh, a certain lifestyle that was geared harmoniously around the planets. At the time he did not know what was going on, and he stayed a course of 15 years. They ended it, I think, in the 1940s for World War II, and they resumed. Anyway. What happened was, he had another anthropologist by the name of, uh, I think his name is Dieterton, went along with him the second time, and they spent, uh, they spent a great deal of time studying this Dogon tribe. I wouldn't say it's a tribe, because I heard it's about 4,000 of them. I don't think that's a tribe, that's almost like a nation, you see. Sometimes when we say tribe, we think of a small group of people just sitting around, you know, and we don't understand how big this, these this thing would actually be. But anyway, this tribe of these people, our brothers and sisters told them, we know of stars that you can't see with the naked eye, but we know they are up there. And they said, well, all these people are crazy and all of this. But anyway, later on, uh, anyway, to their surprise, they had developed telescopes that could see a certain star that would pick up uh, this, this smaller star called Sirius. They noticed that they have the Sirius is the brightest star in the sky. 
and they noticed that one uh, astronomer noticed that there was a smaller star or some type of flashing going around and he couldn't figure it out when they, when they captured it on the telescope, they found out that it was a particular star. And they said, well, how do these people know this? But the point about it is that these people have a great lifestyle, but the point that I want to uh, take a flash at is the actual mythology. Now, this is the mythology. The mythology, we know these people are the descendants of the ancient Egyptians or the ancient Kemites. And the mythology is what we should be concerned with today as black people. This is very important. Unfortunately, they, uh, the book, this is the book, The Pale Fox. On it is the cover of The God No More that I'm getting ready to talk about. This book came out in French. This book was in French, I think, I think it was 1971 or the late 60s. Anyway, they, they translated it and it came out in English in 1986. And in the book, they said that this book took a lot to do. And they said that if, um, based on how much people, how much they get sales, they would continue the book. But anyway, we were ignorant at the time, and we didn't know anything. And I guess a few people bought the book, but now the book is out of print. I heard you can get the book now. They have a few, a few of them at uh, Green Ground Mall at First World, and they're constantly trying to get more in. But anyway, this mythology of this the Dogon tribe, I want to go into the mythology because it's very important. Number one, they say they have a god armor. And the god armor supposedly created the world. I'm giving you, it's a, it's a complex version, but I'm trying to give you a watered down version so you can get the concept of it. Anyway, Amma created the world. Amma said, okay, I need a son. So she created the son, Ogu. She said, now Ogu, you will be complete. First I'm going to create you a brother, and then I'm going to create two daughters. I say she, they say he, but I say I like to use the concept of she because when we talk about God, you know. That's, that's what you prefer. Anyway, she said, I'm going to create you two brothers. You, you another brother and two female twins. The female twins would be symbolic or would represent your spiritual half. But Ogu got very impatient. He broke out of his mother's womb. And when he broke out his mother's womb, she said, okay, this was called rejecting creation. About like some people that we are being oppressed by to this day. Uh, grafted, mutated <coughs> people that is against nature on the planet no matter where you go. We don't even need to discuss who these people we're talking about. They are not human beings. That's a lot to deal with when you really think about it. They are not human beings. Hue means color. Right? Going by the dictionary, hue means color. These are not human beings. You remember when they first went to the moon? They said one small step for man, one large step for mankind. Remember that? There's a papyrus called the destruction of mankind where the goddess Hathor in Kemet, the destruction of mankind where she goes and slays this evil race that are the enemies of Amun-Ra. Keep that in mind, the enemies of Ra and Osiris. Kemet, Dogon, the Ogu is called the pale fox. Pale meaning white, fox meaning slick, slick sly, the beast. Anyway, the pale fox, very important. He said, just like the arrogance of the European, I want to be just like you. I want to be able to create. Said that she said you could never create. But now we're talking mythology, and you got to understand when I start talking mythology, a lot of black people say, oh, that's mythology, that's some spook stuff you're talking. They didn't understand that mythology, the, the ancient man used to, his ancient knowledge, he used to transmit it in mythology. So what you thought was mythology was actually the same scientific principles that you study every day in school. You understand? They put science into mythology, that's the African way of doing it, so you can teach it to the babies and all. You understand how that goes? Anybody have any problem with that? But anyway, she said, you won't be like me. Ogu said, I'm going to be like you. I'm giving you this virgin. So he walked around in her womb. She said, you could never create. He, she, he walked around in her womb until he found out how to create. 
She said, okay, you can create, but you can never create one exactly like me. So what I'm getting out of this story is the same thing. The white people can't create black people. Black people can have all colors of the spectrum. You know. Anyway, she was going to destroy him because he had a placenta, and his placenta was earth. His placenta was earth. She said, I would, I'm going to, going to destroy you and your placenta. That sounds something like the story that we hear now about somebody destroying somebody's evil. And she said, no, I can tell you what, I'll make another, I'll make a brother, your brother, no more. And the brother, no more, will be, will sacrifice for you and will save the earth by the placenta. You understand? And then we hear that some other place by somebody sacrificing for us. Isn't it funny that all over the world we hear these stories reoccurring, but everybody say that they got the the one thing, and we know it all comes from one source, you see. Anyway, Ogu, I want to show you this. I want to look at this. No, no, I'm sure you not here. Uh, I want to show you this picture. Picture of a spaceship. <coughs> Ogu has what you would call a spaceship. i got another picture. Pay attention to this. It's very important. Because this is affecting us right to this day. Every Friday night, you can turn on your TV about 9.30, and you can see this type of stuff going on right now. I just want to get through this joke on because I want to go into a lot of deeper science or whatever. Oku has a spaceship. Here's a group of spaceships, rockets. And also, Oku has another spaceship. And this is about, what, seven, eight hundred years old, this right here. And this does look like some type of UFO or some type of flying saucer. Okay? Anybody have any problems dealing with this? This is what it is. No more. One day is supposed to come down and supposed to subdue his evil brother, Ogu, and purify the earth. About like somebody else is supposed to be coming back that we all waiting for. Everybody waiting for. And it's interesting that his sign is a fish, which is the same sign as Jesus Christ, Pisces. Isn't that funny? See how these, this stuff travels all over? Anyway, I want to go into this star Sirius because no, I got it right here. in the Dogon, as well as the ancient Kemites, and as well as the Africans, knew where heaven was. It's funny that we have all of these religions, and somehow they tell you heaven is in the sky. Didn't I tell you before they said that the people who forget the cosmos won't really know heaven? Well, we're going into 1992, and we need to know something about the cosmos. <coughs> yeah, I'm going to link this stuff up so we know exactly what's going on tonight. Anyway, they knew where heaven was. Heaven was a physical place. Hell is here. We can bear witness to that as black people. Hell is right here, and we catching hell from the number one devil there is. He's not a devil, he is the devil. We got documented proof. If you got any questions, question and answers, I'll document that for you. Right in the British Proprietor, the, the Heretic Proprietor of the British Museum. Translated by Alan H. Gardner. Anyway, heaven was, as the Dogon and as well as ancient Kemet, was around the constellation of Sirius. The brightest star in the sky, Sirius. And other scholars such as H.P. Blavatsky, um, John Anthony West, different scholars say that if we were to locate a physical heaven that all of the religions are talking about, we would have to locate it around Sirius because our sun is millions of times bigger than the earth. They said that even though our sun is that bigger than the earth, Sirius is 13 times bigger than the sun. No, so let's, 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 let's brainstorm here. If you was to go to heaven, let's say if you was to go to heaven, and it's trying to explain the cosmos, and you walking around in heaven with your, your white wings on and your milk and honey and all of the things that you say in the church, you would have a sun. And in that, and in that, that sun in heaven 
would be serious, take this stuff very serious, because the white man is taking it very serious, that sun would be serious, or we would say sophist in Greek, going on back, it would be S-E-P-T, sept in, in Kemet, or Egypt, but serious, would, or it would be, Potolo would be the actual, the, the smaller star in, in the Dogon um, religion. But we talk about Sirius. Now, supposedly our ancestors, when you die, this is going by ancient myth. Now, if you can't believe nothing, you should be able to believe your ancestors. Or you can laugh at the ancestors and call them all fools. They say when you die, based on whatever you're supposed to do, your soul goes to Sirius. Right here, what we have, get this picture. I'm going to explain this to you. I'm going to explain this to you. This, in Kemet, when you die, this is a death chamber of some pharaoh. And what you have, because I spoke about it in Revolution 101, you have on your tombstone, let's say you have your, your date of birth, and you have that slash represents your life, and then you have the expiration date, which would be when you die. Well, this is the same type of concept in one of the Egyptian tombs, a uh, comedic tomb. Right here, you have the birth chamber. Because right here, if you can see, I don't know if you can, there's a picture of the great mother, which is that hippopotamus god. See, the great mother has a big stomach. She comes up out of the water, just like a pregnant woman, but also the water, uh, hippopotamus coming out of the water represents the womb. So this is the birth chamber right here. In the middle, you have chenoux or cartouches. That is, when you were alive, they have all of these cartouches in the hieroglyphic that explain what you did or what you were. And the chenoux or, uh, or the cartouches were the actual, your actual name of that pharaoh, of that noble person, of that, of that no, noble person. This is the middle. This is the birth. This is the middle. And right in here is the heavens. Now, I want to show you this. In the heavens, you have all of the celestial stars, but right in the middle, you would have the goddess Isis, or Aset, Aset. And right up here, you would have the hieroglyph for Sirius. It's telling you where this actual person went to Sirius, or, or, or Sothis, or Set. So it's telling you the concept of heaven. We know this because there's a papyrus in the, the Pepe, the, the Pharaoh Pepe in the third dynasty, Kemet, Actually, they show the papyrus when he dies and what happened in the transformation state all the way to the point where he goes to Sirius, or Sothis. That's some amazing stuff because for once in your life, you're finding out what's happening beyond death. Well, it's amazing to me. I don't know about you because uh, what went beyond death. But anyway, the Dogon said that our ancestors dwell on these planets. You have the planet B which is the smallest star that you couldn't see, which is a burnt out star. It's called a, a, a dwarf star. And personally, I don't think anyone can live on a burnt out star, a burnt out planet, whatever. But there's a serious C. Now, the Chinese have been studying this for about 30 years. And the Chinese say that there's a moist climate around this serious C. And you can go back into the, the works of uh, Tahuti coming out of Greek that they stole out of the Library of Alexandria. And there's, and the works, they talk about this moist climate with these papyrus reeds, and they actually are talking about a moist climate around a certain planet. This is the Sirius Sea. I think in the 1950s, one astronomer saw it one time, and I think he saw it the next year, and they never saw it again. So now the white people are saying there never was any. But the Dogon say that it is, and if anybody knows, you need not doubt these people. Everything these people have said up to now was accurate. It was true. So if I'm going to believe anybody, I'm going to believe our brothers and sisters. And all. But anyway, supposedly our people dwell on this planet. And one day, Nomo is supposed to rise up. And he's supposed to come back. And he's supposed to subdue his evil brother. Now all we need to know is, when is this time coming? Because we're catching a whole lot of hell right now. And we need to know just exactly what's going on. Now, it's one thing about this. I want to get into this concept. The Indians have it, and it's called a big horn medicine wheel. 
the Indians have it right here. In America, they worship the same series, the Big Horn Medicine Wheel. The Japanese had it. It was called a bow star, or they would say pan hoop, pan hoop, which is also serious. So we can go all around, and even the Aztecs, we can go all around the earth, and all the original people of the earth <coughs> knew about this star, but the white man, because he's, he's not original, and number one, he never had an original idea. Everything he stole from people. Now, the people, the Asiatics are just living around Kemet are living around, let's say, uh, Arabia, different places where you have this migration of this nomadic person that comes in. Even the Greeks, they hated Sirius because, you see, what happened is Sirius would rise in the summer. And when it would rise, the waters of the Nile would rise. Now I want you to think a minute. When the waters of the Nile would rise, it would irrigate the land, would give vegetation, and give civilization. So this star is credited for giving actual life to this planet. <coughs> now, if we got any problems on where heaven is, this celestial concept, if something gives life to something, and that means it is the mother. And in Kemet, it was called the great provider. But outside of Kemet, with the nomadic Europeans and the rusty, dusty Asiatics, they used to hate it. Sirius in, in Greek means scorching. Now this is very important. It means scorching. Scorching hot. Because during the summer months when this thing would rise, it would bring summer, and it would be very hot. And the European didn't like that because he's a cold person. So he would say, my God, based upon the, this is the Greeks, based upon the, the comedic concept of Sirius being heaven, they would say heaven is hot. Heaven is burning up on the equator. Now all of a sudden, we got a what? We got a hell that's hot. See how things are reversed? We got a hell is hot now. Knowing doggone well if some heat come, we should be able to stand it. We got people walking around on the equator right now. Blue, black, things come in hot. But we know that hell is cold because cold came to doggone ice man. And all the hell that came with it. See how things are switched around? You see? We are 180 degrees from the truth. Now, the morning star that supposedly had rose, supposedly had rose during the morning when Jesus Christ was born was serious. It's called the morning star. So this star that you saw that the three wise men saw was actually serious. And there's a part in the book of the dead that say when Sirius rise, the divine child would come from between the closed legs of Sothis, which is half thought is going to come. We, now, we, 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 we're giving you mythology, but we're also giving you uh, astronomical and scientific facts. I'll explain. Say that the divine, the divine child in the, in the Amenta, which is when things are supposed to be over, say, okay, it's over. The time that you all been waiting for, when you go to heaven or when you go to hell or whatever, in this time when things are supposed to be over, they say it will be a divine child would come. That's the same divine child we talk about, Jesus Christ. You see, Jesus Christ is a historical figure, an actual historical figure. We need to get this right. But the Christ, K-I-S-T, Christ, Christ, is a mythological figure coming from Kemet. The whole concept of Christ that we understand is a mythological figure that was thousands of Oh, almost 10,000 years before the coming of the historical Christ, who is Jeshua ben Vandera. Jeshua meaning Hebrew for, for, for Jesus, being his son of, and Pandero would be, you would be a son of the priesthood that was in Kemet that wore panther skins. In all. But this divine child, supposed to come between the closed legs of Sophist, or Sirius, or Sept, they're talking about the return of a certain cycle. 
the end of the world is the end of a new age or a new eon or a new cycle. You see. Now, this point I want to make is if it's the age of a cycle and the age of a new, if it's the end of an eon, this is the point I want to get into. When these cycles are up, certain things happen. What happened to us is there's certain cycles. And if you hold up the divine laws of God, what would happen is that these cycles would, if they came and you were righteous by holding up my, the divine laws, if you held these up, you would go in right into the next cycle, untouched. I know we went through five or six cycles, maybe longer than that. We talk about dynastic Egypt or, or Kemet, went through five or six cycles, maybe longer than that. And when these cycles, but somehow we fell, and when the cycle came, it doesn't mean that when the cycle comes, you're going out, but it means it's a gradual process. But you will, you see, degenerate. And that's what happened to Kemet. It degenerated over a certain amount of time. But these cycles, um, one, which is a Sothic cycle, a procession of a Sothic cycle, is every 26,000 years. And there's cycles upon cycles upon cycles. There's different types of cycles, short, smaller, and there's a cycle that's every 1,600, 1,460 years. Cycles are very key. Now, I'm trying to gear up to get you into the frame of accepting what you're going to start seeing within the next, let's say, five or six years. The next three or four years, the government is going to come out and they're going to tell you about certain things that they've been holding from us for the last 40 something years. And the point I want to go into, I want to go into the cosmos and the heaven. Because you are the people and the reason why they've been holding this stuff away from you. Number one, you came from heaven because you are God. You are as above, so below, you are in the image of God. This is nothing I'm saying, this, this, this sacrilegion or anything that's against the Bible or whatever you're into. Whatever it is, since you were the original people on earth, you are what it's supposed to have been. You are supposed to what, what, what people are supposed to be like. We understand that the European comes later. He comes from you. He, 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 he comes from the lower half of you. Now, if you came from all of the heavens, all of this is yours, and you came from all of the heavens, and he came from you, which was on earth, then that means that he doesn't possess what it takes to go to another level. That means that he can only regenerate on earth. That's why the white man knows I either rule now because I ain't going nowhere. You got the Albert Pike, which is one of the, the American Masons, one of the greatest Masons in Amer American history, said if you white people knew what religion was really about, you would mess with it. Because he's saying, you are the devil. This is what the white man said. Alistair Crawley said the same thing. Alistair Crawley tell you, I am the beast, 666. I am the beast. And I am the devil. Now. So whatever it is they do, they can't go where we go. You understand? We, we go, whatever it is, either they're going to rule or we're going to rule. It's as simple as that. Ain't no compromise. You can compromise against the comfort in the comfort zone, but sooner or later you know if you're living in his society, it's going to be a master-slave relationship somewhere down the line. Ain't nobody that you know of, black man living in America right now, that's got such and such a power that he can plot his own destiny and can tell the white man to go to hell and he's sufficient and he's not self-sufficient. Name one. Certainly can't be Jesse Jackson, can't be no Maynard Jackson, can't be Michael Jackson, can't be none of those. You see. So the point is, he understands that whatever it is, 
that we have that, 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 that equals the cosmos of the planets, he doesn't have. I got a friend here named Rodney Cohen who was up in med school. Now check this out. He was up in med school. And he had a, a black friend, I think, working in a lab. And the, guy, and the guy told him, he said, come in, I want to show you something. They, they, you know, we're working and they had the dead bodies in the morgue. And they would crack the skull open, right? And, and, they, and they would see all this, uh, they would, when they would go into the body, they would see all this black stuff around the neck, around the base of the spinal cord of black people. This black stuff, the black substance, the melanin. The melanin that is in everything in the universe. They would see it, and white people didn't have it. This is the same stuff that we're talking about when we're talking about the stuff that would make you go beyond this realm to another realm. And the white man doesn't have it, and he knows this, and, it's, and, and he has the masses of his people fooled. And get this. Now, I don't know if you want to believe it or not, but to this day, everybody in here shouldn't eat no more hog. You shouldn't eat no more pig. Not because... It's bad for your health. You know, you know, and we understand that. Well, there's a lot of things. Hell, Kool-Aid bad for your health if you drink enough of it. <laughs> but the point is, in the Amenti, which is the Taut of the Amenti of the underworld. Now, what is the underworld? Number one, when the Hebrews came out of Kemet, or were kicked out of Kemet, depends on what story you want to believe, the biblical story or the historical fact, and travel and a priest that was among them, uh, Moses, or you want to put it, or you say Mose, or uh, uh, a certain word, Mosa, Mosa, which is, is no more than an Egyptian pharaoh named Tuck Moses, Ak Moses, you hear that a lot. Taught them the, the religion, or taught them what he got out of the mystery school when he did it. For almost 100 years, almost close to a thousand years, they didn't have this hell concept. Now, before Sheikh Anthony Diop died, he came here to a, uh, America, and right here in Atlanta, in the in the King Chapel, in the, in the uh, King Martin Luther King's Church down there on Auburn, he said that the Jews adopted this 100 years before Christ. This hell concept, the, the stuff that's got us all scared of going to hell. You understand this hell concept. He adopted this from the Book of Gates. The Book of Gates is, is, is a series of gates, a series of, of levels you go through when you die on certain planes. Now the Book of Gates simply said that not everybody's going to hell or everybody's going to suffer. It just meant the people that would suffer would be the enemies of Osiris and the enemies of Ra. Osiris is a black god, he's a green god because he's a vegetation god, but he's also a black god. And in the works of Tahuti, Ra is seen as a black, blue-black god. So they didn't mean everybody's going, they were talking about the enemies of Osiris. And that mythological concept, if you translate, that means the enemies of us, the enemies of black people. And this is the hell concept that we're talking about, which the European knows what he's getting ready for means his end, and it's the enemies of black people. This is what this underworld was all about. But in the underworld, let's say if you die, it's an underworld for us on a spiritual plane, but it's a really bona fide, natural born, behind kicking for this white man in a few more years. Let's say if you're going in the underworld, and they have these series of steps, and at the end of the steps they have Osiris being judged. He's going to judge you. Before you can go to another plane, because they didn't believe in uh, a damnation to hell, you're going to go 14 miles under the earth to a hell that is, that, that is what, 15 times hotter than the sun, 4,000 miles away, but yet the sun is millions of miles away or thousands of miles away, and it's hot, and this thing is 15,000 miles, the 15 times hotter than the sun, and only 4,000 miles, and you don't burn up? You see how it is? When the man tell us things, we don't use our head, we'll fall for anything. But on these series of steps, you're going to be judged. And now check this out. Before you go to another plane, let's say that we're talking about us, they would have to beat the 
evil spirit out of you, your lower half. That could not exist into the higher plane or the spiritual plane. And what they would do was, now this it might be mythology, but it's actually scientific. They would beat it into pigs or the hogs. So when you eat a pig, you're actually eating your ancestors' lower half, the beastly nature. Now look at this. A pig was represented as set typhoon. And by the heretic papyrus of the British Museum, set typhoon, let's say, now, the prototype of the devil that we know came from set typhoon or Satan, that came from Kemet. This is the oldest form of this beast, this devil that we talk about. That we all scared about it. The white man got us all scared about it. The prototype of that devil is called set a soot, a set type. Now, this devil is represented as a pig and also a donkey or an ass. And the British Museum, in the heretic papyrus of the British Museum, they say that the, the set type, and what we're talking about, even though we put it in mythology to explain religious principles, we're actually talking about our actual people. And these people are the common foreigners known as the miserable Asiatic, since there wasn't no Europe at this time, then they identified the place. Because Europe is a big, uh, Asiatic, Asia Minor, Asia Major, or whatever, is a big place. They say these people that live up in the mountains, always grumbling, they have a restless nature and an irreprehensible sex act. These people are Scythian people. When traveling in this particular part of the world, do not go alone. This beast they were talking about was a European, right in the Heretic Papyrus, the Chester Baby Heretic Papyrus of the British Museum. So the concept of these gods that we were talking about, that you, that you all spooked out, were talking about actual people. Now you know doggone well that the devil that you have learned about in religion he can't even compare to what this beast has done. This beast has taken over a million, over a billion people off the planet. Whole races, the Caribs, which the Caribbeans is named after. You don't know no Caribs because they're gone. Millions of Indians wiped down, what, about what, 100 million? Wiped down about 14 million. The Tasmanians, every last one of them wiped out. Millions of people, 35 million Africans taken off the continent in the Arab slave trade that we don't know about. This is before the European slave trade from this beast white Arab. If you go to Saudi Arabia, 85% of that is black people. But they are oppressed. They say they got Arabian princes that come outside the same Arab and throw breadcrumbs out in the black people there. But this beast Arab has killed millions of black people. So there's nobody on the face of the earth that has suffered like we have. Billions of people. The whales, the, the whales and the, the nature, you know that the Indians, when they were, when they were, check this out, when they were, when they were uh, fighting the Indians, I think it was in, at Wounded Knee, the Indians had, uh, buffalo was their main livestock that kept them alive when they were at war. Governments told the white, told all the government, all these poachers or purchasers, or what you want to call them, told them to go out and shoot and kill the buffaloes so the Indians wouldn't have no food. They said that it was 80 million buffaloes. When the white man got through, it was 80. Now you tell me, there's no devil in no red tights with no pitchfork under no ground more diabolical than this beast that we're talking about right now. He is the devil. You know he's the devil, but then again, that's that melanin talking. We such kind-hearted people that we can't even accept our own enemies. Now, the man is saying, and, 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 I, and, and remind me of this menti, this menti. The man has said that we got to get rid of all the Africans off the continent. Because what we're about to do, we're going to run this thing, we're going to run this world the way Europeans are supposed to run this world. Simply by doing any doggone thing we please. Having sex with dogs, worshiping the devil, having sex with women, men, you name it. But the only thing that's going to keep us in check 
it will remind us of how much a beast we are with them black people over there in that church jumping around talking about God. <laughs> Albert Pike already said, those people who look at heaven will endure and bear the burdens of earth. So they say, look for this new world order that we're talking about. We got to get rid of black people and we're going to have black people out of here by the late 1990s or early 2000s. And in, 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 in Chronicles of Biological Warfare in 1969, the Burbank monkey disease passed by the government, cooked up at Fort Detrich, Maryland. 1978, shot up homosexuals with hepatitis B vaccine in New York and San Francisco. 1983, the first cases of AIDS break out. We all laugh, say, oh, that's a homosexual disease. That's the smoke screen because they have a... Uh, 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 an obscure sex act, peculiar sex act, so you say, hey, that's right, they could do that. And the next thing you know, the number one recipient of AIDS is in New York and all over is, is the black woman. They already got the black man. They say last year they arrested 75,000 black people in Atlanta, 55,000 of those were black males. That ain't including the brothers that got killed. The brothers are already crazy out here. You understand? <coughs> so we know the black male. Now they're going after the black female. You know that we cannot liberate and save ourselves, black people, not unless we come together. I can't do it without my black woman. The black woman can't do it without the black man because you're going to find out that you don't have no allies all over this earth. You are the despised and the rejected all over the earth, so we might as well get used to it. But he's already said he's got to kill. In the Bilderberg meeting in 1950, Baden-Baden, Germany, the Bilderberg meeting said that we got to, for population control, global 2000, we got to wipe off, wipe out millions of people. So, so the earth won't run out of food in a hundred years or so. But we're going to wipe out Hispanics, blacks, and homosexuals. Homosexual being the silk screen. Blacks, you know how to hit Africa. Africa, by the year 2030 or 2020, it will be 75 million black people dead with the AIDS virus and another 65 million that's already HIV positive. Why is this? Because they are getting ready to, to establish a new Kemet or a new Syriac land, which is serious. In the British Museum, there's a papyrus tell you to, to govern your land with obelisks, temples, and pyramids. The new Syriac land, you can't use the old cities because we're trying to do a new city. We're trying to do the cycle. The cycle means we got to have a new world order because we got to change the government because the cycle is up and our time is up. In order to do this, we got to go total new. We get a new government, a new place. All the other old cities are old, worn out. Swinging off the hinges. We got an untapped south. We go to Atlanta, Georgia. It's named after Atlantis. It will be the new Atlantis. Named after the ancient city Atlantis, which is the Syriac land, which Atlantis, believe it or not, that's why I need some water spitting all over the place. The, the Atlantis, believe it or not, Atlantis, believe it or not, is not some place to suck under the ocean. That's what the white man is trying to fool us with. Atlantis is actually down at the beginning of the Nile where the inundation would occur when the star Sirius would hit every uh, July 23rd and rise the Nile. This land that they're talking about, this sunken Atlantis, is actually down at the beginning of the Nile. Uganda, Tanzania, and the Ethiopia, Nubia, Sudan, and all of that beyond present-day Egypt. And isn't it funny? They say, well, if we got to build a new Atlantis, we got to wipe out the old. What's well, Uganda, AIDS, Somalia, famine, Ethiopia, war, all started by the government. You see, this is the Atlantis that they're talking about. Why? They say because the custodians of the world, <coughs> that every religious doctrine that we know if we trace it back, it will go beyond Kemet. It will go all the way back to those people living at the beginning of the Nile. They're talking about that is the Atlantis. 
So they're establishing a new Atlantis, and if you go downtown, what will you see? Based on the papyrus in the British Museum, pyramids, obelisks, and temples all over. You see them all over the place. This is the new Atlantis. It's the new south, the new place to establish a new world order. The Bilderberg meeting in 1990, the Bilderberg meeting said that just in case George Bush does not win, what we'll do is we'll put another candidate on the other side and will be ready to pick up the slack if George Bush doesn't win. And they elected Bill Clinton to be the new president in 1990 in the Bilderberg meeting in Baden-Baden, Germany. He's the same George Bush that you went to the polls and you pulled that lever to vote for this beast cracker thinking he's going to give you liberation and he's going to be the man. He's worse than George Bush. He's three times worse than George Bush. Why? Well, number one, George Bush, you knew he was the beast, and you knew he didn't like black people. So if you know somebody that, you'll come up with your guards up. But because you think this man is what you think, you think he's this reincarnate of Carter, and Carter also, this Global 2000, the white black people out, Carter is the one that revised that. You see, the white man ain't never been your friend. You think that he's this so-called savior, everybody last Tuesday all walking around all happy and stuff. You, and people are all happy on Wednesday morning, people act like Jesus came with his crown. And they don't even know that this beast is the beast that's going to take you into the new world order. It was all planned by the government. He is the same devil as that George Bush. They are two, they're probably right now calling each other laughing. Because they're a part of the same world fraternity. You understand? Skull and Bones, the, the Bilderberg, the Tavistock, and all of that. They are all of that. But you know what? He's worse because he's going to have black people singing and dancing along with him. They've already started singing. And we got Vernon Jordan. They're gonna, they, uh, they've already uh, 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 said Cole, Miss Cole over to that spell, and they're going to give her a post. They already mentioned her, Mina Jackson, Jesse Jackson. All these Negro leaders that you admire ain't gonna do nothing but buck dance and bootleg for you and send us to a early grave. <laughs> you see, he's the same people, so you can do it. Now, you can believe it that there's no white man that's gonna liberate us. Now, next portion I wanna get into is, number one, we're gonna say, well, what we're gonna do about it? Well, we're gonna get into what's gonna happen. And I wanna get into that part this next portion is on the UFO phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Because you gotta realize, for the last 47 years, people all over the world have been having sightings and they've been covering them up. The book you need to get is the Above Top Secret by Timothy Good. This is one of the better books because the government have their own books out there and they give you some spooked out stuff and you don't believe it. So you gotta watch. They always have propaganda mail out. Also, but I want to go into this. It's the above top secret. It is the last top secret. It is the last thing that the government is waiting on. And they've already gradually started getting you prepared for it. In 19, in, seven, in September, they had this, the ET exist. They told, they said that in October, a month later, that they're going to turn on this big old telescope in Puerto Rico, and they were going to check to see if there was extraterrestrial life in the universe, right? Trying to fool you, because they already know the deal. But they're going to say, oh, well, we got this telescope, and we want to see if it is, and then they go, oh my God, guess what? Uh, there's life in the universe. And when they get you prepared in their way of telling you, they can prepare you with any kind of lies because we don't believe nothing to what's coming on the TV or what's coming. You understand? And this can get the people prepared to fight an outside enemy that is actually your Jesus Christ. Believe it or not. Now, let's go into some ancient stuff. <coughs> They've been covering up UFO sightings since 1940s. I think it was Roswell? 1947. 1947. Was it Roswell, New Mexico? Yeah. Roswell, New Mexico, they had a, a, a UFO crash. And when they had this UFO crash, they had, the spacecraft had Sanskrit or hieroglyphic type forms all over it. You see? And 
they established the New World Order or the, the group that Bush is a part of, if you don't know, these secret societies established a group of men called the Men in Black. And the Men in Black were the people, every time you had these sightings, people would go out and they would say, well, I got this side, and they would report, report it to the police, the police would report it to the, uh, the FBI, the FBI would report it to the CIA, and then these men in black knock on your door. Tell you what they got to tell you, and you say, well, I'm shutting up, or I'm a dead person. This is how they controlled this thing for the last 40-something years. This men in black. Now, in 1950, in a prison, they came to visit a man by the name of Malcolm X in 1950, a year before he got out and went into the nation. But if you remember, Malcolm X was already in the nation before he got out of prison. Right? But he didn't see no dog on UFOs. I'm quite sure, I don't want to have to go into a whole lot of UFO things because I'm quite sure everybody knows about the UFOs. You've heard it, even, you know, you've heard something about it, so you kind of understand what's going on. But I'm going to give you some details on the black side of that. Malcolm didn't know anything about any UFOs. He was in prison. He didn't see any sightings. But what had happened? Malcolm had went. And it was, was, was already in the nation and was corresponding back and forth with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, remember? If you, if you know anything about Malcolm's life. Now in the 1940s, I'll tell you what happened. In the 1940s, Elijah Muhammad was out passing out a literature, I think it was in Chicago, passing out this literature telling black people not to go to the war. And they arrested him. When they arrested him, they got out of his briefcase pictures of this spacecraft, this mothership that he talks about. He got pictures of this mothership out of his briefcase. Now, that sounds like some spooked out stuff because, see, we are trained by the white man. And the white man tells you, if I don't have a stamp of approval coming out of my universities, don't believe nobody without an education. But remember, we got to look, are we adults or are we a, a children? Or do we believe in God or do we not? If you believe in God and you hear the preacher say that God comes in many mysterious ways, then God can work in many mysterious ways all over. Now, I'm not a Muslim. My brother here is in the nation, but I'm not a Muslim. Don't intend on going in the nation. But see, I'm 